In this tutorial, we're going to work our way through the Create Shape form, where we're going to look at a series of different vectors and how we can alter the settings within this form to create different shapes. So let's go to File, Close, and then we'll go ahead and we will open an existing file. So from the Project folder, we're going to open the Create Shape Guide Vectors file. So here we have a set of simple vectors that were created in the software and we're going to use these to demonstrate how to create shapes using the Create Shape tool. So to start with, let's just go up to the top here and we're just going to tile our windows horizontally. That way I've got the 2D view at the top and the 3D view at the bottom. And then to access the Create Shape tool, we simply go over to the Modeling tab and it's the first icon within the modeling tools list. And it's this one here to create a shape from vector outlines. So we're going to click on that and that's going to open up the create shape tool. And so the way that this tool works is you select a vector and then you assign a profile where you can alter the height of that to create your shape. So for example, we could take this circle here and then we need to assign it a profile where we have six different profiles for us to choose from. So you have the curved profile, angled profile, concave, smooth, flat, and then a custom vector profile. We're going to look at all of these options throughout this tutorial. Once you've assigned a profile, for example, we'll just stick around with the curved profile. You have various options to alter the angle um, of that curve. Then we have various options in order for us to really control the final height of our component where we can choose to add in a base height and we can choose to uh, specify a final height option from within the form. In this case, we'll just go with no limit. Then you can choose how you want to combine this component with other components. We have the option to add, to subtract, to merge high, or you can merge low. And then you can give this component a name. So for example, we'll call this one Dome. And then when you're happy with all of the settings that you've got, you can press apply. And then you'll see that in the 3D view, we now have a Dome component and that's based on all of the information that we've just put in, into this form and that's associated with this vector. You'll see in the 2D view that we have a gold circle here and that's basically the 2D representation of our component whilst we're actually creating it within the Create Shape tool. When you're happy with all of the settings, you can simply go ahead press apply and then you can close out of the create shape tool. And so now we can see that we have a dome component here within our component tree. It's called dome because that's the name that we gave it within the form. And then if we select that, you'll see it's highlighted that here in the tree. You can see we've also highlighted the 2D grayscale of that component in the 2D view. And we can see it's also highlighted the actual model here in the 3D view as well. And then we can look at changing this object if we wanted to. So we could take it, we could select it again to put it into transform mode. And I can do this both in the 2D and the 3D view. We can move it around. We can look at sizing it. We could rotate it if we wanted to. And we can do all of these things within the 2D and the 3D view. And then if we wanted to delete that, we could right click on the grayscale and we could look at using the delete option. We could right click in the 3D view and use the delete option. Or we could right click on the actual component itself in the component tree and press delete. Or we could just take it from either the 2D or the 3D view and then just press delete on the keyboard and that will delete that for us. And so you can see I no longer have a component here in the component tree, neither do I have a 2D grayscale or the actual 3D model and that's because we deleted that component. So now let's have a look at some of the other options that we have in the create shape form. So let's go back into that form here and so we'll start by selecting the circle. So we've got a circle here. We're just going to give that a curved profile, no limit, 
and we'll just press apply to assign that and we can see the result of those settings uh, that we've got here with our vector within the 2D and the 3D view. If you wanted to create a new component all you need to do is use the option here to start a new component and then you'll see that that's now accepted that shape and everything's been deselected and we can go on to select a new vector in which case we'll select this vector here. So with this vector, let's just give that an angled profile. And again, we won't bother with any of the height settings here, but we'll go ahead and press apply to see the result of that. And we can see what that looks like there. And that's based on the angled profile within the uh, width of our vector that we've got here. Again, let's just start a new component. So here we can take this blob shape and then what we could do is we could look at applying a new profile. So let's go with the concave profile. So here we could just go ahead and press apply and we can see the result of that. So you can see how it's coming in at the bottom from zero and it's just going up to the point. We'll put that back in Z and then we'll go ahead and start a new component. And then we can take this shape Let's just go with this smooth profile. Let's go with that, press apply, and you'll see it will create a shape like that. It's almost like a bell shape. It just has a nice smooth transition there. Put that back in Z, and then we'll go ahead, start a new component, in which case we could take this vector here. Let's have a look quickly at the custom vector profile. So we're going to select the custom vector profile, shift and select a profile to go with that. And then we could go ahead and press apply to see the result of that. And so that's basically took uh, our vector as the profile to assign that shape. And we're going to look more um, at the custom vector profile later on in this tutorial in a little bit more detail with a, quite a few more examples. Okay, so now that you're happy with those shapes, you can just go ahead, press apply, and then we can simply close out there. And then now you'll see that we have five different components within our component tree. And again, if I select them, you'll see that they're highlighted. I can take them in the 3D view and I can look at moving them around. I can rotate them. I can then go ahead, take different components and resize them um, or even just look at really altering the shape just to really transform them and you'll see that all of these components are their own entities that we can then further manipulate after creating those initial shapes. Okay so we're just going to take all of those, we're just going to press shift and we're just going to delete them using the delete key on the keyboard. So now we're going to show you how the different choices that you make within the form will react with different vector outlines. So this time we're going to look at creating the same shape amongst different individual vectors. So let's just go back into the create shape form. And this time we're actually going to select all of these vectors and how we can create one shape over five individual parts. Now this isn't normally the way that we work. All we're doing here is we're just demonstrating the different shapes and the different choices that we can make within the form on different shaped vectors. So we'll start off by looking at the curved profile. I simply select the radio button for the curved profile to select it. You can see we're currently on an angle of 45 degrees. Let's just press apply just to take a look at the result of that. And you can see what that looks like here. Now if I wanted to increase the angle, let's say I wanted to do that to 60 degrees, I can simply type that in here and then press the space bar to accept that. When I um, accept that using the space bar, you'll see that in the 3D view, the software has updated that angle. So we're getting instant feedback on the different changes that we're making from within this form. 
I can also, rather than typing in angle values, I can look at using the slider if I wanted to. And you can see that with every move I make on that slider, the 3D view is always updating. And this is really useful for if you, you kind of don't know what the angle is you want to make and you're just doing this all naturally and you can just use the slider just to see what you like the look of. You can also use negative values and see the results of those and so you'll see that we make these negative shapes and again we can go back up into the positive shapes. So let's have a look now at the effect of the angled profile. So if we use the angular profile here, you'll see now that we've got an angled profile. And so we've got angled sides that come up to a point in the center of our object. And so again, we could type in various um, profiles here. So let's go with a negative 30 for instance, space to accept that, you can see that we're creating a negative shape that has an angled profile of 30 degrees. And then again, we could also look at using the slider, so I could increase that up, like so. We can go up again, and you'll see that the more angle we have, the steeper this is getting, and that's at 73. Now, if I take the slider bar up to 90, um, what's actually going to happen is the software is just going to default that back to 45 degrees. This 90 degrees wouldn't actually exist uh, because it's not really possible, would end up having a vertical edge. And so it will just default to displaying in the 3D view what it would look like at 45 degrees. So now let's have a look at these two options. So we have the concave profile and we have the smooth profile. So with the concave profile, you can see that we're creating these sorts of shapes and you'll see also that the angle is actually greyed out. So we can't specify an angle here, but what we can do is we can look at um, altering the final height of the object using some of the options that we've got here within the final height form. We're going to look at these uh, later on. But in terms of the actual shape, you can see that we're creating this shape that's flat and then it just tapers up to a point at the center of each one of those objects for that pleasing result there. Also, we have the option here to create a smooth profile. So it's quite the opposite. And if we click on that, you'll see that what that does is it enables us to um, come in at a flat where it raises up and then rounds off at the top to create these interesting shapes. So then we have this flat profile and if we click on that, again, the angle is greyed out here because it has no effect on profile as we use this tool to create flat shapes. And the way that we give height to our flat shape is by applying a base height. So for example, if we wanted this to have a height of a quarter of an inch, I could type in a base height of 0.25, press space to enter that in, and then we can take a look and you can see we've just got flat shapes here, and if I hover my cursor over the top of those flat shapes, you can see in the bottom right hand corner there, we're displayed the Z height of that at a quarter of an inch, and that's because we specified that here in the form. Now the base height doesn't solely apply to flat shapes. You can actually use the base height in conjunction with any of the profile shapes. For example, let's just say we make the base height zero. And then we'll just go ahead and then create a dome. Okay, so currently we have a dome that has zero base height and it's just calculating the height of that based on the no limit option. Now, if we wanted to add in a base to that, what we could do is we could simply go ahead and then type in a value. So we'll put in an eighth of an inch there, press space to apply that. And you can see we have a base height of an eighth of an inch. And then we have extra height here based on the actual shape profile and the final height. 
and again we could look at increasing this to half an inch if you wanted so you have a much steeper base height or we could just give it zero base height just to reset that and then we'll pop that back in C and then we do have the final option which is the custom vector profile option which we're going to look at in a little bit more detail shortly within this tutorial so now we're actually going to look at some of the height options so let's just take our curved profile and we're just going to go with an angle here of 60 degrees press spacebar to accept that and we can see the result of that here in the 3d view now the height that the shape reaches is actually based on the actual width of the vectors that we are using to create the shape and so when we are using the create shape tool all we're doing is creating a profile with an angle and we're just stretching that about the width of the vector or vectors that you've got selected so let's take a look at the circle so we have quite a large width here and, that's, and what's, what's happening is that curve profile is just stretching across at that angle across the entire width of that vector. And then that will create quite a lot of height because we have quite a wide area to cover. Now, if we have a look at a shape that is quite narrow, for example, where the vector is here at the bottom of this egg shape, or even at the top here where the T is, we're actually creating less height, where we have less space to stretch across. And so the height is actually going to be less. So rule of thumb is the you know, the further apart your vectors are, the higher the shape that's going to be created. The closer together or the narrower your vectors are, you're actually going to create a shape that's going to have less height. So let's just take a look at this shape here. Now, with our final height set to no limit, what the software is doing is it's scaling the height in proportion to the width of the vectors and the angle that we use. So we're just going to show this theory here in the 3D view. Now, if you glance down to the bottom right hand corner where you'll see the Z values as I hover my cursor over the model you can see that that's changing it's just just showing us the height of that model okay so we can see it's currently at uh, right at the edge at 0 0.0367 and as i scroll well, sorry i'm not scrolling as i glide my mouse over okay so we're at the kind of highest point here and that's at 0.35 and that's because we have a wide area here and if I just uh, drag the mouse down as we get closer into the middle where the vectors are getting closer together you can see those numbers are dropping so now we've got a Z value displayed at around 0.2 and then as we go further down you can see it's getting less but then as the width of the shape is actually getting wider you can see that those numbers are actually going up and we're actually back into the kind of point threes threes and then as we go down to the bottom you can see those numbers are getting less as the as we get closer to the vector now there are other options available for us to use within the form to control the height of any of our shapes and we could take a look at those so we're going to look at the limit to height option so this option enables us to uh, create a shape where it's based on the shape profile along with an angle and we specify a height within our final height form for example, let's just go with 0 0.05 and then what it does is the software will create the shape. So based on the curve profile at the angle of 60 degrees, the moment it reaches the height of 0 0.05, it's actually going to flatten that off. So let's just apply that to see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see here we have curved profile and then if I hover my mouse over the flat area we can see uh, the Z value being displayed at the bottom 0 0.05 we have a flat shape and we can see it that's applied that to all of those different vectors 
So we can type in precise values by typing them in here, press spacebar to enter the, them in. Or we could even look at using the slider and every time I use the slider you'll see that the 3D view updates you can see we're getting more of a profile uh, and the height of the object is actually getting um, higher where it's actually flattening off at the exact height that we're specifying here in the limit to height form. So you can continue just scrolling through just to increase that height and if we just keep going you can see we're now at uh, almost just under a quarter of an inch and then if we just raise that uh, to 0.3225 we can see that actually the t-shape isn't actually changing and so what is happening here so if we take a look at where our mouse is over the 3D view and take a look at the Z values, you can see we pretty much have a maximum height of around 0.178. I think 178 is the highest, or 18. There we go. 0.18 seems to be the highest point of it. So no part of this T actually gets up to the value of, of the point. 3225 and so it's resulted to the standard profile and angle as though we set it to no limit and all of the other shapes are actually being flattened off at this height as we entered that uh, in the form or used we actually used the slider here and we can see that those other shapes are actually flattening off um, at that value and so these shapes are still reaching those values which is enabling them to be flattened off. And so you can continue to change the height that we limit our shapes to using this slider. And then we can do that by increasing that and we could increase it essentially to a value uh, that is actually larger than any of these shapes um, that we've got defined and we'll see that none of them have actually been affected by the limit to height and that's because it's not reaching the height uh, for it to actually limit to. Now, using the limit to height option is a really nice way to control the height of our shapes, but it does affect our profile by adding the flat area on top of each of our objects. So another option that we have in the form is to scale to an exact height. And this enables us to scale to an exact height and the highest point of the object will be at the height that we specify in this form. So let's just click scale to an exact height and then here for an example let's just go with half an inch and then we could go and press the space bar to accept that. And so the highest point um, will be at 0.5 and so if we look at the peak of the dome you can see we're reaching the 0.5 there. However, if we take a look at the other shapes, you can see we've got 0.25, we've got 0.23, we've got around 0.27 uh, and 0.11. And that's purely because uh, the circle is the, has the widest area out of all of this selection and everything else is just going to uh, scale out in proportion. Now when we create shapes, we actually normally work with one vector at a time. So let's just reset this. So let's just click in the white space and then we'll just select this circle. So here we're gonna go the round profile, 60 degrees. We're going to scale this to half an inch and then we could go ahead, press apply and then the highest point of our dome is going to be at 0.5. We could use the start new component option. So now we'll select this rectangle. This time we'll use an angled profile here and we'll go with 60 degrees again. Um, and then this time we're going to scale that. Let's try a quarter of an inch. We'll go ahead, press apply and you can see that. And when I hover over the center there, you can see at the bottom where it's being displayed uh, the kind of quarter inch. Can't quite grab the pixel there, but it is at a quarter inch high at its highest point. Okay, start a new component. Let's just take this blob shape here. And so for this blob shape, we're actually going to go with a round profile and we'll go with 40 degrees here. 
and then we're going to scale that to 0.75 in this case and then what we could do is go ahead and press apply and then again if we take a look we can see at the highest point we are getting to the uh, three quarter inch there okay so then we could take a look at this egg shape and if we click on that egg shape you'll notice now that my blob shape has disappeared and I no longer have that yellow um, color here in the 2d view and that's because we didn't um, press start a new component we just went ahead and press apply okay so what we can do is we can go back and we can click on this vector and you'll notice that as I click on this vector it's remembered the last uh, lot of settings that we use for that vector which is really handy and so we could go ahead press apply and then we need to press start a new component then we'll take this shape here we'll go with an angled profile this time well let's go with a concave profile sorry a smooth profile this time we'll scale that to an exact height here and we'll scale that to um, a quarter of an inch but then let's also apply in a base height so we're going to add in a base height too so not only are we scaling this to a quarter of an inch we're going to apply a base height here of a quarter of an inch as well and so here we could go ahead and press apply we can take a look at the result of that and so the the total result of this height we're actually going to get half an inch okay so you can see roughly around here we're reaching the uh, half inch point there and so we've got a quarter inch in terms of the actual shape we're creating and we also have a quarter inch in terms of the base height that we've applied as well so let's use the option here to start a new component Then we'll select the T shape here. We'll go back to the angle profile. Let's give that an angle of 45 degrees here. I'm going to give that a base height of 0.1 and we're also going to limit the height here. We're going to limit that to 0.1 and this should create a nice chamfered effect. So let's just apply that to see the result that we've got here. Okay, so if I hover my cursor over the top, you can see we have a total Z value of 0.2. And so what's happening here is we've got the base height that we've applied of 0.1 and we've got the angled height uh, that we limited to 0.1 and so where it's reached the 0.1 height it's limiting that off and it's just flattened that off for us and it's created this really nice uh, chamfered effect okay so we can then go ahead and we can just close out of the form there and you can see we have all of the different shapes that we've just created so let's just select this component hold down the shift key and then select component one that will highlight all of them in the selection we're just going to right click and we're just going to delete them so now we're going to look at the other options that we haven't yet covered in the create shape form so we're going to go into the modeling tab and in particular we're going to look at blend to inner vectors so to help us demonstrate this we're actually going to switch off layer one and we're going to switch on the blend to inner vectors layer and if we just click in the 2d view there that will just minimize our layer bar there so the blend to inner vectors option enables us to take a profile where we're able to blend it between one vector to another typically an outer vector to an inner vector so let's have a look at an example of this so I'm just going to select all of these vectors here and you can see we have a set of vectors where we also have a vector inside of the outer vector and these vectors are going to help us demonstrate how the blend to inner vectors option works. So with all of those vectors selected I'm going to use the blend to inner vectors option then we can choose a profile for example let's just choose this concave profile we've got blend to inner vectors selected and then what we need to do is we need to specify a height for example we could say we want that at 0.3 and then we could simply go ahead and press apply to see the result of that and so we can see we have some very interesting shapes that we've just created 
So looking at the circle, in terms of the vectors, we have a circle and then inside offset to the left we have a smaller circle and so what we're doing is we're taking that concave profile and we're actually blending it from the outside to the inner vector and so where we have more width you'll see that we have more um, shape here and it's more spread out whereas where the vectors are close together like the left hand side of the inner circle you can see we have a much steeper shape compared to the right hand side and again it's all to do with um, the width of the vectors so the closer they are the steeper the shape the further apart they are um, the more progressive that shape is and so um, we have a kind of progressive build up to that shape like so. Okay, looking at the rectangle, you can see we have a rectangle outer shape and then inside we have a completely different shape. And so we've got uh, our profile trying to blend from a rectangle to this new shape. And that's why we're seeing this cusping effect here. But still, you can see that uh, we've got quite an interesting shape there. Looking at the blob shape, okay, so we've got two very similar shapes here. So this works actually uh, quite nicely. And we can see that again, we can see the steeper shape on the left and we've got more of a um, stretched out shape over on the right hand side here. And then looking at this shape, this egg kind of shape with the star, again you can see the cusping effect there from the shape trying to blend from this shape into the star shape. And then again you can see the result of what we've got here with the T shape going into those four squares. Very interesting. So let's have a look at different profiles. So we could look at this smooth profile here and again you can see and some real nice shapes and it really kind of opens your eyes at all the you know the, the different sorts of shapes that can be created using two vectors and the blend to in a vectors tool so we can also use this with the standard profiles as well so we could try a curved profile let's uh, see how that looks okay so that's what we get there and then we've got the angled profile and you can see the result of that there. So there's lots of different options for us to choose from. So now let's just go ahead and we'll just reset that. And now we're going to look at some other options. So we're going to look at the custom vector profile. We'll also look at what the sweep does here. So to help us demonstrate uh, those options, let's just go to a new layer. So we're going to go to custom profile and sweep. So here we've got a set of vectors that we're going to use to demonstrate the custom profile. So the custom profile enables you to create your own profile using an open vector. And you can see from the graphic here the kind of typical shapes that you'd like to create. So you'd have a vertical leg and then the actual profile going out to the left hand side and that will create a positive shape. If you wanted to create a shape that goes in on itself you can do the opposite. So draw a leg through the centre and then your profile will be on the right hand side and we'll look at an example of that shortly. So let's just quickly demonstrate this um, to begin with. So we're going to go into the custom profile and then what we want to do is we want to select a vector to create the shape from and then we hold down shift and we select the vector profile. So you can see I've got an open profile here. If we just zoom in there, it's just a shape that goes vertically up and then we've got the profile going out to the left hand side where this point actually meets up with the bottom of the leg at this point in terms of the Y values. Okay, and then we can simply just go ahead and press apply to take a look at that. And you can see we've got a pretty cool shape there. And then if we look up the Y axis, we can take a look uh, at the profile here and you'll see that it actually matches up with the profile that we've got from our vector. It's going up straight at an angle, across straight, up straight at an angle, across straight, up straight, at an angle, and then across, which is exactly what we've got here. And so all we're doing is we're taking this profile and we're just filling that out according to the width of our circle, just as we did with any of the other standard shapes. And all we're doing is we're just specifying what that profile looks like from the vector itself.
And so it's very important to note that your vectors need to have these vertical legs. So let's just reset that and have a look at an example where we didn't have a leg in place. So we can take that vector, press N on the keyboard for node edit mode, and then D just to delete that span. And we'll take a look at the effect of what happens to our shape when we don't have the leg on that vector. So we can take that vector, shift and select this vector here, and then go ahead and then press apply. Okay, and what we're seeing here is a completely different shape. And what we're seeing in terms of the result of that is as if our vector, if we just take that, has a start point here at zero, and then the end point here is also at zero. And so that's why we would see this very shallow shape. So again, if we just select those and then press apply you can see we've got a very shallow shape and it actually goes into negative because this area would actually be going below zero at that point and so it's important that you include these legs in here so we'll just reset that and then we'll just use the undo command just to get our vector back. There we go. Uh, we'll pop that in Z and then in the 2D view, we'll just press F to fit that to our screen. And now we can have a look at the option to sweep those profiles. So the sweep option allows you to sweep a given profile perpendicularly around the vector where it basically scales the profile to the height that we specify within the form. So as an example, let's just take this vector here, shift and select this profile, or this cross section, and then we're going to use the sweep option. And we can say we want to sweep that to 0.2, press apply, and we can take a look at that. And so you can see what it's done is it's scaled the profile uh, to 0.2 uh, and then swept it around. And you can see if I hover my cursor over the top flat area, our Z value is displaying uh, 0.2 in there. And you can see we've still got that profile, the cross section being swept around uh, that shape. Now it's worth noting that the final shape may not actually attain the height if its scaled profile's width doesn't actually fit, for example. If we take this and say we wanted that to be 10 inches and then go ahead and press apply, you'll see that it's only managed to, where, where the profile's been scaled to 10 inches high, um, only this portion of that profile, so the first uh, part, if we just zoom in over here, so it's, we're literally just seeing this part because that's the only part that would actually fit in within the width of that uh, the circle vector that we're using. And so that's just worth remembering there. Okay, so if we just take that back to point 0.2, so 0 0.2 in there and then press apply can see we have a really nice shape there and it's really good for creating uh, decorative borders like this one that you can see here. So let's have a look at a few more examples. So we'll use this option here to start a new component and then in the 2D view we'll just press F to fit that to our screen. So we've got the next shape we have a series of squares that make up a rectangle and we could take all of those and then we could take this profile here and then we could say we wanted to sweep that to point, let's say three in this example and then press apply. You can see some real nice shapes there and it's very effortless. So we've only selected a few, a few squares, got the profile and it's created this rather interesting shape. And you can see that uh, this would be very useful for creating patterns, for instance. Okay, and you can see that profile, got that rounded profile, uh, the, sorry, the rounded stepped profile. And you can see that looks really nice there. So let's use the option here to start a new component. And we'll take a look at this blob shape. So if this blob shape, we're actually going to use uh, a cross section where it actually goes 
in on itself. And so, like I said earlier, when your vectors profiles are to the left hand side, you create positive shapes. Uh, when they're to the right hand side, they actually come in on itself. So I'll show you what that means. So with that profile, sorry, that vector selected, let's select the profile as well using shift. And then we could go ahead and press apply. Okay, and if we take a look at that, so you can see we've got the vertical edge on the outer edge this time, and then that stepped profile is actually going down into uh, the inner portion of this blob shape where it just remains flat. Okay, so real nice shape there. So use the option here to start a new component. So the next shape, you can see we've got a heart shape within this egg shape. So we're just gonna select both of those and then we'll go ahead and we'll just go with this um, nice curved stepped profile. And then again, we could go and press apply just using the settings of the sweep at point two. And you can see it's applied that curved step on either side of those vectors. And so you can create some really nice, interesting shapes like the one here very effortlessly. Okay, so we'll put that in Z and then we'll just go ahead and press uh, start a new component. And then we'll look at the final one, which is the letter T. So uh, the custom profile and the suite works really nice with lettering as well, as you can create really nice um, stepped effects for your letters, as well as many other profiles that you may want to create. So with this vector selected, let's go for this profile. So here we've got a curve coming up straight at an angle straight up and then curved and then flat on the top there. So we can take a look at um, the result of that one. So again, we've got the selected profile sweep. Let's just make that, let's say two five and we could go ahead and press apply. We can take a look at the result of that. Okay, so you can see what it's doing there and where it's getting thinner, you can see it's actually losing that because it doesn't actually reach that. So if you wanted to, we could actually decrease that and you can see we've got a different effect there. Okay, we'll pop that in Z. So let's just close out of the form here. We're going to take all of those components and we're just going to delete them. Okay, so we're going to go into layer one. And we're just going to look at the last option that we have available within the create shape form. And that's how we look at applying a tilt. So to demonstrate this, let's just take this rectangle. And we're just going to put that so it's overlapping the circle. So with that rectangle, we're just going to apply a rounded shape, 30 degrees, no limit. We'll just go ahead and press apply. I want to start a new component and we'll take this circle here, we'll go to the same settings. And again, we'll go ahead and press apply. Okay. And so here we can see that that circle is adding on top of the rectangle. And so in order for us to change that, so it's blending into the rectangle, we need to set the combine mode of that to merge so that all the highest points are merged with the component previous. Okay. So it's now blending in, which is great, but there may be times where you have a component and you want it to appear in front of another component. So let's say we wanted this circle to look as though it's in front of this rectangle here. And so the way we do that is we can look at applying an angled base height, okay? And that just ensures that we're only lifting part of the component up so that it appears in front of the previous component okay and so a tilt is basically like applying an angled base height okay and so to do that we simply use the tilt option here and it will default to 10 degrees and you can see it's done that from left to right over here and we can change that by using the set option here. And so we can set our anchor point. So the start point uh, is on the left hand side. And then you can 
do that over to the right hand side like so as it is if you wanted to you could set that so that your start point is on the right hand side and then you let go on the left hand side and then it will adjust that angle like so if you wanted you could do it from the bottom up and you can see how it's constantly changing there uh, in the 3D view. And it's just according to the direction that we're actually setting that tilt to. So in this case, we want that so it's tilting from the left. So click here, over to the right, click there. And you can see it's now tilting from left to right. And you can actually see that angled base height. Now in this case, that's far too much height. We don't need it to be uh, that tall here. So we can just alter the angle here. So let's try five, press spacebar to accept it. Again, you can still see we have quite a lot of height over there. So let's try 2.5. Okay, so it's just, it's just enough that it's just going over here. And so when we look in Z, we can see now that it's clearly over the rectangle the rectangle now looks like it's in the background and we still have attained the you know the relief height here we haven't added too much height but just enough that it appears that it's over that rectangle and so then we can just close out of the form okay so we can now take that circle and we can actually move it around and you can see when I move it the vector stays in the same place and so it's important to note that the components have no relation to the vectors that they were actually made from. And the only time that there is a connection is when we're actually setting up the shape within the form. After that there's no connection uh, between the shape and the vector that we use to create that shape. However, there is one thing that the vectors do do, and that is it remembers the last set of data we used to create a shape. For example, if we go back into the create shape form and then we pull out the circle, it remembers the last settings for each of these vectors. And if we go through each one of those vectors, you'll see that it's actually changing to use the last selected options that we use within that form associated with that vector. And so that completes this tutorial on how to use the Create Shape tool to create shapes in your modeling process.